Good morning, everyone. We're doing a little preparatory scouting first thing. I'm gonna try to spray some winter annuals out here in these fields, and I'm just verifying ground conditions are adequate to not get stuck. Of course, moisture comes up overnight, so it's a little damp on top. I may have to give it a couple of hours just to let the sun work on it, and it'll do a pretty good job today because it's gonna be in the 70s, probably get a breeze at some point in time, clear skies, great drying weather. I'm kind of between a rock and a hard place this morning, so to speak. I'm trying to get some things done that need firm ground conditions, but at the same time, overnight tonight, beginning tomorrow morning, there is a 50% chance of a half inch of rain. Essentially, that forecast means that it could either rain nothing or five inches, and there's really no way of telling if the storm's gonna be severe enough to produce some of those effects. All the way over yonder, we have that field cultivator that we got out the other day, worked some ground with the 9620R, and the rolling basket was having issues engaging correctly with the true set system. I'm hoping to get that alleviated before the spring tillage rush kicks off. The rolling basket is very important. It's part of the reason that this isn't perfectly finished. I was really confused about why it looked like this until I realized the basket wasn't working correctly. Yeah, don't even get me started. Technology is your best friend when it's working correctly and when it's not working, it gets above your pay grade for maintenance pretty quickly. See, there's definitely a little bit of moisture under the top there. I don't wanna pack this down just to get something done crumbles up pretty nicely. This soil type is forgiving. That looks like a compaction ball, but it's not really compaction, it's just sticking together. Hopefully this is not a lesson you hear me talking about a lot this season, though there are some growing seasons where it is pertinent. Working your lighter farms wet is not nearly as taxing on your soil as working your darker, muckier soils wet. Those ones will make you pay all year if you get on them too early. Some of these lighter farms, you work them once and then you come back work them again it's like you're never even out there in the first place and look at that a souvenir never know what you're gonna find here i think i'm just gonna go ahead and hook the field cultivator up first thing might as well be productive while i let mother nature dry the ground out a little bit worst case scenario i have to unhook it later i'm gonna do that anyways because if there's a storm coming tonight we don't take any chances we try to put the most expensive vulnerable stuff back in the shed for protection and safekeeping. I left the hose in the tanker last night to do a short little leak test and based on the fact that it's not running out anywhere and it's loaded to the brim I don't think we got any leaks. I'm impressed because I turned this on yesterday when it was empty about 4 p.m. and this morning it's about 8 o'clock so it's been 16 hours 7,000 gallons of water that's pretty good for our well might be empty now yeah but it does move a lot of water i honestly wasn't planning on putting this much in i'm gonna have to waste a little bit so i can show you guys the new parts here. i'll be the first one to admit that this is wasteful however when you consider the implications of a leak on a tank of this size even if you just have a cheap load a few thousand dollars of chemical on this tanker it has a leak the financial implications are rather large and don't even get me started on the environmental implications so a very small price to pay to make sure that we don't have a leak on the tanker after having some hard work done on it this off season. I dumped about a third of the water, roughly guessing. Now we're gonna run the pump, make sure it's working, and I'm gonna show you guys these sparge tubes. Many would say that's not very exciting. I would disagree. If you consider that that tube is on the bottom of the tank and there's 2,500 gallons of water on top of it, the fact that it's stirring all the way to the top, it's pretty neat. In our typical fashion, the tractor I need on that field cultivator is there. And of course I've got two big planters blocking the way. So I gotta back those out very briefly so I can get that.
solved the great missing 7,000 receiver mystery the other day. Got one on the Hagee, as you can see. Turns out there was one on the 670 that was just very hard to notice unless you climbed up on top of the stairs and up towards the cab. The nice thing about these 9460Rs is that you can actually see the hitch. Put it in the right way, Chris. Okay, good. You never know what these field cultivators are going to find out in the field. What is this, Chris? A flail off of one of your manure spreaders? Probably. You're stay. telling me that those manure spreaders didn't just stay together all the time? Yeah. Throw some manure out in the field. Well, that seems kind of dangerous. Half, half barrel. It's a half barrel spreader. Huh. And it, that's how they did it. That's how they're made. I don't know if the, I don't know if the new ones are that way or not. But I'll give it to you for safekeeping. I get figured you do that. I'll just throw it over there. Now. Okay, we're gonna give her a shot. Take it down the road to the field we checked out a little bit ago. Assuming I even got the hydraulics hooked up right. Looks like I do. Let's try this out. Some of you may recall this field cultivator from last year. It was brand new the previous summer, and when we hooked it up, we couldn't get it to unfold. And I'm having the same issue right now. I cannot get this thing to unfold on this tractor used about a half a can of electrical contact cleaner on the seven pin in the ISO. No luck there. This unfolded fine on the other tractor, so could be a double-edged short here. Maybe the tractor's got some issues as well. Because of the way the wing wheels are positioned, it folds dynamically. You can see that they are moving. This is the same exact thing that happened last year, and they narrowed it down to the seven pin connector, which isn't the computer, it's the power to the system that we're having another issue this year. Kind of concerning, honestly, with how much is on this field cultivator in terms of technology. I'm gonna try cleaning it out a few more times. If I can't get it to go, I'm just gonna have to go ahead and call the service now. Did you have this tractor on when you ran it? No, I had the bigger tractor on it. <clears throat> Giving it one last try. If it doesn't work, we're just going in service. Pretty lackluster reliability out of one of the simplest machines on our farm. I mean, a field cultivator is just iron sweeps and some hydraulics. Not that complicated. I've already got two issues so far this spring. The issue when it was brand new, a lot of it is sensor electronically based. The true set on a field cultivator is a bit overrated in my opinion for the value they're saying they're providing. I just don't see it. Or what would be even better would be a strip tail bar. Yep, nothing. Very frustrating. As opposed to fixing the first issue, we've now created a second issue for the John Deere tech to address before they can even look at the first issue. Phil from Alliance Tractor just showed up to look at that field cultivator, chatted with him, and once the brakes release on the tanker, we're off to go get a load of chemical to spray. That was a pretty quick trip up to Helena. Not a lot going on this time of year, so we didn't have to wait. It wasn't a big load either, so they got us filled up quickly, and now I gotta go hop in the field cultivator with the Alliance Tractor guys, see if we can get the basket to work up, because it looks like they got the unfolding issue fixed. Okay, Skyler from Alliance Tractor just left. He was only here for about 10 minutes and he solved the issue. Phil was actually the mechanic here earlier. He got it to unfold. I don't know what he did. Probably just cleaned the heck out of the seven pin like I did multiple times. Maybe he had better product or a brush or something. Seems to be an issue that we deal with regularly on this field cultivator, at least yearly at this point. It was an issue last year. After he left, I showed up with the tanker. Skyler was in it looking at the field cultivator. We took it out to the field, ran it. Basket did not work that time. And then 
he got out he flipped the hydraulic hoses the other way and then got it to work correctly so the hoses were labeled wrong they're backwards and the issue was that the flow is not going in the right direction. I know a lot of you are immediately going to start insulting my capabilities, and understandably so. You do have to trust me. On the 9620R, when I had this hooked up the other week working ground, I did try flipping the hoses, and it did not fix the issues, or, or maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. Silly that we had a service call just to flip the hoses. I swear I tried that the other day. Oh well, at least we got it fixed. It didn't take very long. The guys at Alliance Tractor are very good to us, especially in the service department. We enjoy working with them. They're nice. They get here in a timely manner. I mean, they're only 10 minutes away and they always accept our money. So I guess we're good customers and they're good servicers. On to the next project. Gonna do some of that spraying I've been talking about for the last few videos. Also gonna do some trial work. We are headed over to the tanker for our first fill of the season. producer so I'm gonna try I don't know 20 acres of this sulfur out here I'm spraying it sideways I know that's going to be rough my goal is to not interfere with my ability to do any other kind of trialing out here the sideways pass should allow this to almost serve as a whole different layer of trial work on the farm I'm kind of nervous like I've never done this before but I ended up doing this a lot last year Spray till I run out and then start spraying some of that Roundup at 2,4-D. 
Just finished that up, folding up, head back to the tanker for a roundup in 2.4D. Uh, pretty excited to see how it turns out. At the bare minimum, I'm expecting to see a visual difference now. Whether or not there's yield, that is the ultimate question. We're looking for an economic return, not just our beans and corn to look pretty. My only concern, which isn't a concern, more of a note about ATS, it's similar to the liquid nitrogens like 32 in the fact that it's volatile. So if it's 80 degrees outside and it's not gonna rain for three weeks, probably don't wanna be spraying it. It is 70 degrees today. The caveat, in my opinion, is that it's supposed to cool down tomorrow and also rain. Rain does incorporate products like that into the soil partially, so it's kind of like a halfway protective measure. I don't think it'll be an issue. Would anyone care to take any guesses as to if the field I'm sitting in right now is a definite yes for spraying right now or a maybe? Seeing as it looks like a thick field of alfalfa, leaning towards the yes on this one. The non-air inducted twin turbos were not my first choice for doing this, but because I cut carrier rate, I needed a size four. I didn't particularly want to spend a thousand dollars on a whole new set of size four nozzles just to spray a couple hundred acres. There's no profit in that for me. I just loaded up my fourth and final load on the sprayer. Got about 40 acres left to spray. It's been as productive as I can be for not having a tender driver. Let that bleed off so I don't get a face full of 2,4-D and Roundup. Someone, and it totally could not have been me, may have hit the ground and broke a nozzle body. I wasn't in full spraying spirit yet because I didn't have all my extra nozzle bodies in the gap. So I finished 10 acres on a field with this. procedure on the farm dictates that when there's a chance of severe storms overnight we definitely put everything inside especially the planters so once I get this finished up although I don't want to it makes sense to go ahead and get everything tucked in just a little after five some rain clouds are moving in already I'm gonna wrap up this last 40 acres or so as quick as reasonably possible and then move on to other things just getting back to the farm after spraying off that last load now time to tuck everything away in the shed the hagey ought to be the easiest thing because i can just pull it straight in right away i forgot this thing has fairly good lights The only major downside that I'm aware of right now to dewinterizing the sprayer and spraying while it's nice is that three or four days from now it's supposed to get back down sub 30 into the mid to low 20s. We don't really have a great insulated storage space anywhere so I'm effectively just going to have to at least partially winterize that again and the tanker trailer. Cost of doing business. <laughs> have the same folding issue next time we hook this up. It's nice to be able to pull it in, it's just not super practical right now. Pulling the field cultivators in the shed has never really been something we've had the space to do. Hooked on, that is. For those of you who have already forgotten, the only reason we hooked up the field cultivator is because we couldn't get the basket to work the other week. And these two hoses right here just needed flipped. We've been slowly commandeering more and more of Jeff's yard, piece by piece, bit by bit. 
I'm not sure he complains though because I don't think he likes mowing all this. So it's kind of a win-win. Just need about 10 semi loads of gravel here. incorporating rain for our freshly sprayed ATS yesterday. It's like I can predict the future. Ah, I'm totally kidding. I had no idea it was even going to end up storming this morning. We are keeping a very close eye on the radar. There was some tornado warnings in this area to the west. It's weakened a little bit, although it's building some pretty strong storms as it comes across. I do welcome any kind of rain as long as it's not four inches of rain in 30 minutes because that would create some erosion issues. Let's hope we get some nice, consistent moisture across our farms to help bridge us another couple of weeks towards planting season and warmer weather. And let's definitely pray that we can do so without getting any kind of tornadoes because this would arguably be the worst time of year to get a tornado, right, as you're getting ready to plant. This is the Apple Weather app. It says we actually have another round of rain coming this evening. My Uncle Chris, for whatever this information is worth, claims that the radio weathermen are stating that the next round of storms this evening could be even stronger unless they don't arrive until after sunset because some of that convective energy is going to disappear once the sun goes down. I'm looking for an inch to two inches of rain here today. That'd be great. The best way to spend a rainy day when you're out and about running errands is to stop by the John Deere dealership and try to spend money that you don't even have. It's not too hard with this green and yellow paint to get in over your head, especially with today's interest rates. The storm this morning didn't amount to much. We didn't even get a tenth of an inch of rain, which was a little disappointing. I may have jinxed us. It looks like this one brewing up today about 6 p.m. is the real deal. Tornado warnings out all across the line and some pretty heavy rain moving across the area, so hopefully there's no damage with this one. I'm not going to make mention of the quantity of rain I'm hoping for because I don't want to jinx us again today. This system right here did have a tornado warning in the back of it. It looks like they just took that out, which is a good sign. The first storm kind of brewed right over us, put down some rain and then stopped. Let's hope that the next one drops some rain. There's been a ton of tornado warnings, both this morning and with this storm, yet there's thankfully been no tornadoes on the ground that I've heard of, at least not in Illinois. Sometimes I think the warnings are a tad bit on the premature side. Just wanna make sure everyone's ready by it, I guess. I'm not a meteorologist or a forecaster or doing any kind of disaster mitigation planning on my own. It's kinda of like wearing underwear. You'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. This is one of my favorite parts about living out here on the farm, is being able to actually watch the storms roll across the countryside without the obstructed city view that we had for the last five or six years. Obviously there's a few trees here in the yard, but I hate to go around and just take them out so I can see westward. Weather station shows north northwesterly wind up to 40 mile an hour. I don't know how accurate the weather station is when the wind gets that high. Max daily gust 42 right there. We ended up with about 1.1 inches of rain last night, 1.2 to 1.3 ish for the day, depending on what gauge you look at or app you use. 
That's about what I was calling for first thing in the morning when I jinxed us, so I'll take the inch. The cold front is quickly coming behind this system because it's gonna get down into the 20s this weekend, which is why I'm pulling the AP out to winterize it again. I already winterized the tanker, which is incredibly easy because there's not a lot of plumbing on it. It's not complicated. Just dump some antifreeze in it. Maybe try to cycle the engine, get the pump moving, and you're good. The sprayer's got a lot more nooks and crannies. I'm just using the cheap RV antifreeze, throwing like five gallons. One thing I want to try real quick is seeing if this precision reclaim system will actually synergize with my air purge and maybe push a little chemical back out of my boom through the reclaim back into my tank. I did spray till I ran out of chemicals, so there shouldn't be much, if any, left in the lines. It's worth looking at though, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire that up. It's pretty simple, reclaim on, opens the valve, go to my air purge here, machine air purge, and we'll throttle up, and it's running. Okay, well that was probably one of the dumbest things I've ever attempted. I did not really think that through. More so that I should have put the boom on the ground, because the air purge puts out so much pressure that it blows right through the check valves of the nozzles. So it started spraying and I was getting out to watch. And although I, I'm only wet because I got out and washed my face off just to be safe, it just was not uh, quite as flawless as I was expecting. So it just fogged some on near me and I just didn't want to take any chances, clean myself off. And now I'm gonna unfold her a little bit and Check it out again. Okay, round two, go. Wow, that actually worked extremely well. You'll have to take my word for it, but before I ran that purge, and I probably dumped some on the ground on accident, it was all the way down below the drain cuts in the bottom. So I bet you I purged out 20 gallons right here. I'm not sure how much this is. Definitely helps clean out. Alrighty folks, I think it's about time to bring this long-winded video to an end. Just gonna agitate the 10 gallons of antifreeze I put in on the pump, hopefully dilute any freezable liquids. It's not gonna get cold enough for long enough that I'm too worried about it freezing, even if I didn't winterize it, but it's just the principle of I'd rather spend a couple dollars on antifreeze versus a couple thousand dollars plus on a new pump if it does get too cold and causes an issue. So I'm gonna do that pull everything back in the shed and take off for the day. As always, I greatly appreciate every single one of you continuing to tune in and support the channel. Your viewership means the world to me. Catch you all in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I'd love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!